So uh, a warm welcome uh, to everyone who's joining us live or if you're watching this recording um, at a later uh, stage. We're thrilled to have you uh, with us for our fifth session um, in the Healthier and More Sustainable Diet uh, Learning Series, uh, where we're all trying to learn together um, and share insights into how we can help people live healthier and more um, uh, sustainable lives and, and work towards this transition um, to live a better life uh, on, a, on a better planet. Um, so today's session I'm really excited about because we're going to share uh, a huge amount of practical trends and insights and then we look at how these actually are applied um, in, a, in a real on the ground setting um, at the retailer uh, Meatworks Turkey. Um, but before I do that, just some quick housekeeping. Uh, we would love to have um, as many questions and interactivity um, in this session as possible. Uh, so please don't hesitate. There's a brilliant uh, panel of speakers uh, here today. So don't hesitate to uh, ask us questions, either in the question and answer box or pop them in the chat. We'll make sure that we, uh, we get to them. And if we don't answer them on today's session, we'll follow up with you um, in an email afterwards. And you can see uh, the hw at the consumergoodsforum.com. And I promise that we will follow up with you on any questions or follow up uh, details that you'd like to get from any of today's speakers. Uh, so just some context setting on, on how we are here. Um, the Healthier and More Sustainable Diets Workstream sits underneath the Collaboration for Healthier Lives Global Coalition of Action. The members of this coalition saw um, in multiple markets around the, around the, the world this evolution towards um, healthier and more sustainable diets. And as a coalition, we wanted to work with people um, all around the globe to help them to make those decisions, um, to provide them with the right information and inspiration to accelerate action on the ground towards healthier and more sustainable diets. A core global team worked around uh, the, these criteria or critical elements that we saw uh, that would make a healthier and more sustainable diet possible and what this industry can do uh, to help to make that happen. So obviously supporting uh, balanced and diverse um, food consumption with appropriate nutrients and calorie intake, um, looking at that diet that has a lower environmental pressure and impact, and of course, extremely important to bring consumers with us on the journey, make sure it's accessible, affordable, and equitable for all uh, people, no matter where you live around the world. Um, we decided on five key areas where we thought we could have a difference. And um, I have here, it's work in progress because we still are trying to understand where we can have the best impact and where we will uh, focus our efforts going forward. At the moment, we have this broad church of five areas where we're looking at um, where we can, um, you know, we can make a difference and an impact at scale. Um, so obviously more plants on, on the plate and diversification um, of the diet, empowering consumer choice. You'd hear a lot about that in today's session. Better for you and the planet dairy and meat, right-sizing consumption, overconsumption in certain parts of the world, underconsumption in other parts of the world, and that intersection of health and food waste and how we can work uh, to bring those two together. So all of the members of uh, the Coalition of Action are looking to see how we can really uh, work together collaboratively um, with partners on, um, on these topics. Um, and uh, just before I, I hand over to today's expert uh, panel, uh, we're building up this library of knowledge and you can find it on, um, on our website. As I said, this is the fifth in the series. We've spoken about environmental label, about regenerative agriculture, around consumer choice. Our last session was on health and food waste. And today I'm really thrilled to share with you um, all of the um, trends, insights and action um, coming from Turkey on healthier and more sustainable products with this great uh, a group of speakers that I have um, with you today. And I think this will show as well today's session how we need to work in partnerships and together to really understand how we can get action um, on the ground. So I'm thrilled to be with Didem, um, Ida, Sertan, um, and, uh, and Nur um, from uh, Migros Turkey, from Nielsen IQ in Turkey, and from Think Neuro in Turkey. You're in for a really exciting um, session, packed, packed with insights and, and takeaways. Um, so please do think of your questions as we are moving forward, and we will leave time at the end of the session to make sure we leave you with some uh, thinking on what you can do when you take all of these insights back to your own business. And I know that this great uh, panel of speakers um, will be very happy to, uh, to follow up with, with all of you um, after today's session. Uh, so without further ado, I will hand you over to Sertan um, from Migros Turkey uh, to kick off today's session. So Sertan, it is over to you. Thank you, Sharon, and welcome everyone. It is a great pleasure to be here today. As you may already know, Migros is operating in Turkey for 68 years, started with a supermarket format. 
Uh, we improve our service day by day for our customers. And now also we become the leading online grocery player in Turkey. Since the day of our foundation, we are working constantly to have a better understanding of our customers. While continuously gathering customer insights from our channels, last year, with our consumer research studies, we reached more than 100,000 customers. Being an architect of many firsts in the retail sector in Turkey, Migros is also among the pioneers of sustainability initiatives. We are always looking for opportunities to make a positive difference at the community through our sustainability efforts. As business leaders, we define products as sustainable according to global standards. We all want to make it easier for our customers to make sustainable choices. However, do our customers know and act on this criteria? What does a sustainable product mean for them? Food retail is critical for sustainable and responsible production, as it gives an opportunity for the producers to meet their best sustainability practices with consumers. Being aware of this role, we have decided to conduct a consumer research study to find the best way to raise awareness of sustainable products in consumers and to reach them with the most accurate messages. We decided to join forces with two reputable market research companies in order to take action in the field of sustainability at retail, motivate the whole business, and design our sustainability communication strategy. By understanding the perception of sustainability on the conscious and unconscious side of the consumer. In the traditional part of the research, the qualitative and quantitative integrated study model was applied by Nielsen, while in the other part, we looked for deeper insights with neuromarketing research techniques conducted by Think Neuro. The details of the research methodology and the insights gathered will be presented by our research partners. I hope you will all enjoy the insights we obtained from this research. I would like to thank Nielsen and Think Neuro for their valuable contribution by shedding light on consumer insights about sustainable products and hand it over to them for their presentation. Thank you, Serdan Bey. Uh, let me start uh, the research methodology that is conducted by Nielsen IQ. So for this uh, special project, we conducted a two-stage uh, project with qual and quant phases. In qualitative phase, we run uh, four online mini focus group discussions. The uh, target group was consumers living in Istanbul aged between 18 to 45 who belong to A, B and C1 socioeconomic classes. After the qual stage, we ran an online survey among 623 people with a Turkey representative sample. So the, again, the demographic um, background about the age, gender, and the SES groups were in parallel with the qual stage. Now let's listen to the details of the methodologies of the neuromarketing phase. Word to you, Eda. Eda, you are on mute. Thank you so much. Uh, in our research, as Sartan Bey already stated, our aim was to understand consumers' perception regarding sustainability. In order to attend that aim, it was necessary for us to measure their unconscious reactions to deep dive into their decision-making process. In the first phase of the research, in order to understand which terms are associated with sustainability, we conducted an online face-to-face -face research with 393 participants. In the second phase, the criteria, in other words, the phrases that define sustainability are measured with NeuroFNIRS, which is functional near infrared spectroscopy device, with 32 participants. For the audience who are not familiar with the neuro tests, it should be noted that neural measurements with 32 participants produce quantitative and representative results. With these measurements, we were able to understand which phrases are associated with sustainability or not at unconscious level, which is the source of decision making. In parallel, we conducted neurovisual research in which we measured 22 visuals related with sustainable products or sustainability itself. 
The visuals were determined with expert opinion of all three parties and were measured with EEG, which is electroencephalography, to understand attention, emotional bond, and cognitive workload they create. Eye tracking measurements were also performed in order to understand eye gaze on each visual. Data such as the percentage of participants focused on selected areas or for how long they focused, etc., are gathered with eye tracking measurements. Again, 22 participants, 32 participants were measured in the visual research. At the end of the measurements, a special process called NeuroScore based in depth interviews were performed where one fourth of the participants are interviewed based on the results of neuro measurements to understand the reasons behind their unconscious neuro reactions. And finally, scientific literature, our expertise, and the research results came together to, find, uh, to form the findings and action plan. On thank to you, you very Diana. much. Thank you very much, Edana. First of all, uh, thank you, Sharon, and thank you, Sertan Bey, for the great opening speech, and thank you, Edana, for uh, sharing the methods uh, behind our uh, important and strategic uh, study. I would like to mention that it's a big excitement uh, to join this great consumer goods forum session and to share also our new Nike insights and foresights for sustainable product trends from the Migros study. As Satan has mentioned, Migros is the front runner in the industry leading the way. And we have with this study also uh, formed the top 14 uh, trends uh, for uh, sustainable uh, products. Uh, and I would like to give a, a short summary as an introduction for this, and then would like to give the words to uh, Noor and Eda. So uh, pricing, uh, let me start with the first trend. Pricing is an important barrier to purchase sustainable products. So we will be uh, covering this one as one of the important uh, trends. Uh, performance is a concern with regards to sustainable products with strong product performance. Uh, this is the trend too. Uh, then we have the, especially the accessibility uh, trend, which is the connection between sustainability and accessibility is actually uh, lacking. And this association should be built via different angles from brand to distribution, from in-store activities to marketing. So this is the third trend. We have especially the trend four, which is about earning the trust, and trend five, which is the local uh, treasure, right? Local origin products are increasingly important for consumers. They expect uh, to see products made in Turkey and produced locally. Uh, we have also the trend with beauty inside out, right? When we talk about sustainable products, content is so important uh, and uh, highlight is important to highlight even sometimes before packaging and being present, right? Uh, here and now is so important and uh, crucial. And then we have the trend of with developing emotional connection with consumers, shopping, highlighting the self benefit. Actions speak actually louder. So uh, belonging to a group is so important for uh, the sustainability uh, insights. And especially also to develop being trendy and being cool and making a statement which is relevant. Uh, as well as resonating with uh, shoppers and consumers is so important. And consumers are saying, I can pay more, but there is always a but, and it's important to understand the insights and foresights deeper on this. So these are the top 14 trends with regards to sustainable products. And now we will be hearing more of the details uh, from Noor, Eda, and uh, me. Noor, let's take uh, the first with the breaking the pricing barrier, right? Thank you, Dida. So uh, sustainability, I mean, it's not a very familiar and close concept for the consumers. So when we ask what does sustainability mean to you, they say continuity. This is mainly coming from the Turkish meaning of the word sustainability, like continuously, permanently. On the other hand side, we see that price is an important barrier when deciding to purchase a sustainable product. According to our survey results, we see that half of the consumers are price sensitive in choosing a sustainable product over a non-sustainable product. Whereas this sensitivity decreases if the products offered are locally produced, local origin is becoming more and more important, increasingly important for the consumers. So they choose the local origin products to support the local economies and also protect the economies. So it's important for retailers and manufacturers to consider the price versus performance balance in affecting the consumers in their purchase decision. I'm handing over to you, Eda. 
Of course, thank you, Noor. When we look at the adjectives on the left-hand side of the screen, that are associated with sustainability, it can be seen that strong is not one of them. According to the brain measurements, Turkish consumers do not associate sustainable products with being strong. Nurse Corbe's in their in-depth interviews helps us to understand the reason for this perception. Participants think that sustainable house cleaning products may not perform well since they have no or little chemicals. They think that more chemical a product has, the more powerful it is. Therefore, cleaning products with natural ingredients create performance doubts. In addition, it is thought that sustainable food products lack in taste because of their natural ingredients. It is recommended to show the product performance in comparison with the traditional products, if possible, to break this perception. To you, Nur. Ah, to me again, I'm sorry. The adjective accessible uh, is also not associated with the sustainability. There are two main underlying reasons for this perception. First, sustainable products are told to be premium, therefore more expensive. So from participants' point of view, these products or brands are not financially accessible. Secondly, sustainable products are not easy to find, I mean physically, so they are not visible on the shelf or there are no shelves dedicated to them. These experiences lead to inaccessible perception for sustainable products. It is recommended to create shelves or assigned areas for sustainable products in the supermarket to increase visibility. I mean, Shopper Insights also uh, show some complementary scores here as well. We see that 42% of the shoppers think that retailers do not run any activities about sustainability. So this is mainly due to the lack of access. Shoppers expect wider coverage of sustainable products in the stores. Moreover, in order to create a strong relationship between sustainable products and retailers, more effort should be put for in store activities, increased visibility and connections with the shoppers. Word to you, Eda. Thank you, Noor. Although sincerity is a very critical factor in buying decision, participants don't believe in sustainability claims of brands. As Jennifer Eaker's 1997 article states, we choose brands in the same way that we choose our friends, and nobody wants to have an insincere friend, and therefore nobody wants to have an insincere product at their home. So earning the trust of consumers is crucial, and this is one of the most critical reasons why they withdraw from sustainable products. It is recommended to transfer the feeling of sincerity so that the consumers are more inclined to our brands, and we will further explain how to do it. Since this lack of accessibility, trust is becoming a key factor in order to build a strong connection between sustainable products and the retailers. Each seven shopper out of 10 trust in the sustainability claims of the brands they trust. So trust is the key issue there, the key thing there. This rate decreases to 32 for the brands they do not trust. And it is only 26% that they trust to the brands they do not know. So perceivedness, this perceivedness, perceive, perceivedness can be built over local production and local brands. It's also important to note that reliable retailer is the key player in supporting this trust between producer and the brand. Word to you, Eda. Thank you. As uh, when you, uh, Nur was already started, uh, Nur already started talking about local production, and this is a very key point for us. As I stated in the beginning, we have also conducted a visual neuro research. The image that you see on the left hand side is the one that created the most emotional impact among the tested 22 images. All images were related with sustainability, and the winning one on your screen shows a local producer's advertisement. From the eye tracking heat maps, it can be seen that participants focused on the product as well as the text on the top. The text clearly states that this, that this is a locally produced brand and belongs to a woman farmer's cooperative. Emotional bond score, which is gathered with EEG, indicates that participants have positive feelings towards this value proposition and their tendencies to buy is higher than any other, higher than other sustainable product ads that we have, been test, that we have tested. So one reason for that is local products beat tasteless perception that we have mentioned in the previous findings, since they are produced with the ingredients that geographic location is famous for, and therefore they're expected to be natural and delicious. 
Second reason is that uh, since there are no big marketing budgets or corporate commercial approach, these products are told to be more affordable. And finally, local producers are perceived to be more sincere and therefore their products are seen as more reliable. Making collaborations with local producers can be one of the solutions to the sincerity problem then. So I'm handing word to the here. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, Eda. What can food retailers do in the field of sustainability, right? Based upon these findings, based upon these insights. Actually, we all know that sustainable products are perceived premium and high in price, right? And local products are perceived cheaper than other products. So Stocking local products, presenting them in store would be helpful to come in 61% of shoppers for purchasing sustainable uh, products. Almost half of the shoppers expect retailers to support the local economy by investing in periphery regions and creating employment. I think these are great insights to touch the local uh, treasure inside of uh, sustainability, right? With this, I give uh, over the word to you, Eda, for the next uh, one. Thank you, Didem Hanım. Uh, the visual research, visual neuro research that I've mentioned also revealed that the products that have sustainable contents perform better than products with sustainable packaging. Participants stated that better it's a cleaning or food product, it's the product itself they encounter with, not the pack. So the harm created by the product is told to be more swear since it affects their body or their immediate environment. They understand that the uh, natural damage, they understand the natural damage caused by the pets, of course, but this has a lower priority when, comes, uh, is when, when it is compared with the uh, damage to their own body. Although sustainability uh, communications are, uh, by the way, the sustainability communications are generally on the packs to you. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Eda. So sustainable product means natural, organic and reliable content for the consumers. It's again in line with the um, neuro results that natural content together with the healthy perception is associated with the high quality of the products and the brands. Ingredients are considered more important than the package itself, as we can see from the graphics here. But this doesn't mean that packaging is not important. Packaging should also be environment friendly and recycled in order to convince the shoppers to buy sustainable products. We can go on with the next trend. Uh, although sustainability communications offer if often refer to future impacts of unsustainable consumption or production, participants do not associate the term future with sustainability. People have difficulty in understanding, understanding the abstract notions such as future consequences of their behaviors. When participants were presented with unsustainable consumptions or production's future consequences, they have difficulty in imagining this horrifying picture in their minds. They tend to feel no urgency and therefore they don't take action because they think they still have time. So we call this tendency as no future effect. In order to prevent this, it is suggested to create a feeling of urgency by giving messages in the present sense and using the words such as today, now, etc., instead of referring to the future. To you, Didem. Yes, actually, the top five concepts that came to the mind of consumers uh, were 49% with being able to continue about continuity, 18% being sensitive to environment not harming the nature, and only 13% with recyclable uh, products. We have seen that only 6% of consumers care uh, for future uh, generations, and they prioritize actually now, and they think of their environment and current well-being, right? Their expectation is to have uh, the instant benefit of sustainable products for now and here, not far away. It's about today, about the present, and it's about now and about the current environment. So I, while forming the sustainability concept, it's always important to touch the consumers from their hearts uh, with uh, regards to the uh, being present, right? With this, I want to give you the word, uh, Eda, to take us through what do we mean further deeper with this. Of course, thank you. To elaborate more on, elaborate more on how to deliver communication messages, I'd like to briefly talk about the previous research that we have conducted as Think Narrow. The research uh, was the world's most comprehensive neuroclimate change research that was supported by financially by European Union. 
In that research, our goal was to determine the message that had the highest impact and that could trigger behavior change regarding climate crisis. In the preliminary research, which was conducted to design the test materials, it was found that species such as penguins or polar bears were mentioned very often when participants were asked what animals came to mind regarding climate change. Therefore, the materials to be measured in the research were prepared with pictures of these animals. Although these animals, which are frequently mentioned in the media, have created awareness, it has been observed that they cannot form an emotional bond. In other words, these animals are not part of the daily lives of the participants, and therefore, them going extinct won't affect the daily life in the city. However, when the message put a finger on the extinction of their local bird or an animal which they usually see around them, the impact rises dramatically. As self-centered beings, Realizing the effect of a danger depends on realizing its effect on one's own life. Consumers are seeking instant pleasures rather than avoiding future pain. They have fancy products or ideas that can bring about benefits in terms of joy, effort, taste, social status, etc., instead of the ideas that will benefit the others or our home planet. Therefore, instead of having value propositions regarding the future benefits of using that product in the greater environment, Having value propositions related to the consumer's self-interests is more meaningful. Value propositions that refer to consumer's convenience, it can be time saving or it can be physical convenience, being a smart choice in terms of value for money, pr proposing a superior performance in terms of product, or increasing consumer's social status such as being a trendsetter, or positioning the product as a glue that is sticking the group so that giving the feeling that not using the product may result in social being excluded, etc. Uh, such uh, propositions, such value propositions are more meaningful, I could say. So when we look at the phrases which are associated with sustainability, we can see that sensible, honest, and responsible are three of them. These adjectives describe socially acceptable person rather than a person that is cool and exciting, which makes you want to approach and explore. I will give an example of the concept in the following slides, but now to you, Nur. Okay, I mean, we also checked uh, that uh, whether the uh, shoppers are um, acting like uh, social responsibly. So we see that 83% of the shoppers mention that they throw out their rubbish after separating it. We all know that this is a claim which only stays at declaration stage, I mean, not leading into action. Cons because consumers are in the need of being part of a community. They want to be active in social responsibility products and they want to be having social acceptance by the community they are belonging to. So uh, parallel to this trend, maybe we can move on to the next trend, which is a complementary one indeed, belonging to a group. So we see that consumers uh, do not want to be an outlier in the society. They are in the need of being a part of society. They, they tend to follow the influencers in order to take action about sustainability projects or issues talking about. Here, I would like to uh, share an incident uh, with you referencing uh, to a TED Talks uh, already re released on YouTube. So uh, it's a behavioral science experiment indeed. Um, some years ago, graduate students uh, put signs uh, on every door in a neighborhood and they asked people to turn off their air conditioning and turn on their fans. Uh, for the one quarter of the homes, they uh, gave a message that is saying that, did you know that you could save uh, $54 a month this summer? So it's like a financial benefit that they are talking about. But, uh, and they ask the uh, households to turn off their air conditioning and turning on, your, on their fans. Another group got an environmental message and uh, another group uh, also uh, received a message about being good citizenships and preventing the blackouts, etc. So after this, uh, people expect that uh, money saving uh, message would work best out of all I'm mean, in terms of the financials. But in fact, none of these messages works. Uh, there is another portion of households receiving uh, a message simply saying that 77% of your neighbors said that 
they thought of their air conditioning and they turned on their fans. Please join them. It's like an invitation. So your neighbors did it. You can also join them. So the people who received this message showed a considerable decrease in their energy consumption simply by told, telling that their neighbors were doing so. So what does this tell us? It's again uh, about being a part of society. So uh, even if uh, something is inconvenient and even if the people believe in it, financial incentives, etc., they don't uh, move them or trigger them to take that action. But social pressure is a really powerful stuff to trigger them to take actions. So for this sustainability consumption and sustainability actions, belonging to a group uh, trend is one of the key trends uh, that we took off from our surveys. So I would like to give the uh, word to Eda for the next trend. Thank you, Noor. Uh, so I've stated that people who prefer sustainable products uh, are perceived as sensible, honest, and responsible. In addition, they are perceived as innovative. However, being innovative does not always mean being cool. As you can see, cool is the least associated adjective with sustainability. A good example of being innovative not being enough can be electric cars. Tesla was not successful because they produced an electric car. The electric cars were around before Tesla. However, people pay multiple times of prices and wait for months to get a Tesla not because they are so eager to save the world, but because owning a Tesla makes them feel cool and trendy. So sustainable products cannot easily blend into our daily lives uh, with only sustainable claims. They have to create a feeling, a desire, an urge, so that they are indispensable. Yes, actually, thank you, Eda. Uh, I would like to highlight the 13th trend, which is all about making a statement, which is relevant, which is uh, touchy, and uh, which is uh, especially creating the attention uh, of uh, consumers, right? Because consumers would internalize the concepts easily when they hear the words from daily life, right? And make the connection better. One of the examples is, for example, instead of saying 120, Cubic meter, uh, cubic uh, meter water, clear, straightforward communication uh, should be made like the amount of water you use to take a shower is five times waste of water, for example, right? So the message shall resonate better with simple and clear uh, language, right? So it's so important uh, to have this so, such clear, resonating and touchy messages, right, Nurse? Yes, Didam, it's really important to be clear and touchy and simple because as we can see, concepts associated with sustainability are limited. So associations like natural, budget savings, recycling, not wasting are the outstanding ones, but they are really at the baby steps still. So we can say that there is still room for improvement in terms of communication language and the tone of the language we are when we try to communicate the sustainability products and benefits of it to the shoppers and the consumers. So here we come uh, finally the, uh, the final 14th trend. Uh, at the beginning of the uh, trends, uh, Didem also mentioned that pricing is really important. So shoppers believe that the quality and value of the sustainable uh, products are really important. So they know the value, but they would not pay extra for that. They are ready to pay, but only half of them would pay not more than 10%. So it's really important for all the manufacturers and the retailers that this should be analyzed in detail during the price point decisions. Product claims and benefits such as organic, local production or natural that will create opportunity for extra payment should be carefully considered before launching the sustainable products or making their communications. So here we all talked about the 14 trends uh, mm -hmm. that are uh, derived. I would like to give the word to Didem to make a sum up of these 14 trends. 
Yes, actually, we covered all the 14 uh, trends which are relevant and which are uh, covering great insights and foresights for uh, sustainable products, as well as the communication uh, of uh, these with the touchy and uh, relevant uh, messages, right? Uh, I think um, it would be great maybe to take also uh, some uh, questions, Sharon. Uh, and it, because we have covered all our trends and it's so important that uh, all these uh, messages uh, are uh, taken into consideration while uh, defining the right strategy on how to approach sustainable products as well as uh, making the communication of it right. And uh, from brand to distribution, from in-store act activations to marketing with a holistic 360 degree approach, uh, this needs to be considered. Uh, for shaping the future with sustainable products. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So many insights. And I, I'm thinking of seagulls and penguins. Uh, I need to change yes. uh, some of my, my own way of communications and fascinating as well around the communication about the future. And we do have tendency uh, to do that. Um, so I, I have definitely learned a lot. So I hope everyone that's listening live or in the future and you pick up on some of those tips. So what I, I there's Q&A coming in, so please do keep typing your questions. But the first one I want to ask is, um, certain so you've got this amazing research these insights conscious and unconscious decision making what are you going to do now at amigos turkey when you've got all of these insights what does that look like on the shop floor or, or online certain would you mind um yeah, giving us some insights into um, what your actions now um from the outcomes of these research i guess our research partners will also support me with the uh, idea that uh, it can be better to conduct this study in your uh, countries as well to make a better judgment and obtain country specific insights. Uh, besides uh, my recommendation, let's uh, talk about our actions. Uh, we realize many projects at Migros in terms of sustainability for years. Among all these initiatives, I can give you uh, some examples of the actions we have taken specifically driven by the insights we learned from this study. Uh, cooperation between retailers and local producers is important for consumers to associate the brand with sustainability. Uh, we are working with local farmers and suppliers in different geographies of Turkey. As Migros, uh, we, uh, we collaborate with the Women Entrepreneurs Association of Turkey to strengthen women in the agricultural industry. Uh, we increase our shelf space for the products produced by different women cooperatives. Uh, we are supporting women cooperatives in Turkey and providing education specially designed on transitioning to sustainable farming. Our localization approach and fruitful collaboration with women cooperatives is presented as a best practice in the blog page of Financial Times. Uh, we are aware that actions speak louder and it is clear that collective action has a louder voice. Since we have a unique position to reach the consumer's everyday life, we are partnering with many companies, associations, and local bodies to increase our impact. As a member of Collaboration for Healthy Rice Coalition, we are focusing on promoting healthier, more sustainable, and affordable choices. With Alpro Danone's plant-based dairy brand, we created a joint initiative together. We are 360 degree communication, including our cha online channels and in-store uh, live workshops at our family clubs, we got more than 1.3 million views. Uh, our FAO partnered uh, Growing Healthy with Migros project started as store tools in order to spread and further strengthen the awareness in children about healthy and good living. Uh, thanks to COVID, the program moved from an in-store focused to digital activation. The educational materials were turned into an animated film with the collaboration of FAO and reached 2.1 million children through our online channels. We increased the visibility of sustainable local and organic products at our shelves. We increased the frequency of our sustainability communication in stores and online to create more awareness at our customers. We evaluated our sustainability communication strategy from different aspects and reshaped it at our corporate communication channels, such as uh, reports, social media messages, and public releases. 
At our sustainability messages, we are mostly trying to reach our customers with today's effects and daily life outcomes of our actions in the same, simplest manner. Uh, our, uh, after this research, our sustainability communication motto becomes as focus on our geography, focus on today's actions and be simple. Uh, these are some of the actions I can uh, mention as examples uh, we took after this study. Brilliant, thank you. Um, I'm just going to go into the, the Q&A and um, uh, see there's um, um, a first question that came in is, um, do you think Turkey is a representative market to perform this type of research considering the inflation? Um, I don't know who wants to take, uh, who wants to take that one. Yes, of course. I think Turkey is a, a definitely a representative market, right, to share these insights and foresights. Of course, depending on the country, uh, there would be some differentiation maybe in the insights, but in terms of the uh, overall uh, direction, overall insights, it, res it would resonate uh, to many other countries. I think there are lots of insights, foresights, which can be replicated uh, for defining and shaping the future with sustainable products, right? But of course, um, I would uh, recommend always uh, to check the details uh, with the localized needs, right? Localized trends, localized insights, uh, definitely, and create the bridge in communication also uh, with uh, uh, specific is with the specification of the different countries, right? Definitely. Thank you. And then the, the next question was, um, what was the most um, unexpected trend that you observed? Or was there something that, um, um, in all of your, your expertise and work that you're doing, yeah, was there something that was um, yeah, unexpected? Uh, I think from my side, the, the most unexpected one was the amount of uh, self-centeredness in people. The, 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 the fact that they cannot see the future, they cannot resonate with the future, or they cannot resonate if they're not seeing uh, an animal uh, in their daily lives, they cannot resonate, associate themselves with the other parts of the world on, or other uh, things that are happening in the world because of what they do in their daily lives. So that much of self-centeredness uh, centeredness and uh, the fact that the media is uh, using different kinds of messages all the time, like polar bears and penguins that we've talked about, uh, they've been pushing it. When, when you ask, you get, get the same message back. But the thing that they're going to, the thing that, that is going to make, the, put them in action, put people in action are different. So understanding this uh, slight difference was uh, shocking, was shocking for me. I mean, I would like to take also the word right for me, especially uh, the importance of packaging is so crucial, right? While making the communication, it's the first moment of truth, right? But while going deeper, especially about communicating of sustainable products, I saw that the real insight is that uh, to talk also about the content, right? About the ingredients which are coming forefront, right? Of course, packaging is still important, but the uh, content and insights, ingredients are uh, so important, uh, which is which I wanted to highlight. And uh, the other uh, part which I wanted uh, to highlight is also uh, especially about here and now, right? It's not about the future because uh, it's not about just uh, preparing uh, for the future, but uh, especially now, also after COVID, we see that uh, today, now, here, and for me, my family is so important in terms of building the concepts rather than getting prepared for the uh, future, right? It resonates much higher. So these were the two uh, angles which uh, I was found quite interesting and uh, also exciting, right, among all others. Brilliant, and I'd love to. Um, there's um, there, another question that's come in: is if um, if you if you had to highlight one thing um, in terms of implementation, what would be the top tip that you would share for the retailers and manufacturers that are um, listening here today? Uh, my answer would be the, the right communication language, of course. Uh, as Dina Manu mentioned, and, and as we have mentioned throughout the presentation, uh, here and now, and their self-interest highlighting these points are really important. And again, uh, the, uh, if they're going to implement something regarding the product, uh, as also Dina Manu mentioned, uh, first of all, focusing on the content uh, of the product, not the pack, uh, would be, uh, I think, important. 
um, from uh, the, the, the quick tips would be that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can also add a point here. Uh, I would like to also highlight the price and the barrier, the pricing barrier here, because uh, about uh, two in the two trends, uh, we observed pricing issue. So, I mean, we all observe that the rising prices and the inflation in several countries across the globe, especially with the recent dynamics we are living. So uh, rising food prices uh, are also contributing to this boost, uh, boosting the inflation. Uh, and also uh, we are experiencing the uh, supply chain disruptions. I mean, the logistics strains and uh, strong demand for the merchandising. These are having also price pressures. So consumers are like feeling the pinch of higher prices in every from different angles. So this is also valid for the sustainable products uh, and price is becoming an important barrier uh, on that stage. And also we uh, know that half of the consumers are price sensitive when choosing uh, the sustainable brands uh, versus non-sustainable uh, products. And uh, it's really important for all the uh, retailers and manufacturer to consider this price versus performance uh, balance uh, in affecting their uh, purchase decisions. So uh, in terms of uh, adapting this uh, price increases and price changes, uh, predictive and prescriptive, uh, prescriptive analytics, I think would be very helpful uh, to foresight the expectations and set the uh, level in a better position. Yes, Noor, and actually it's the top topic, right, across the entire industry nowadays, when many countries are facing inflation and uh, there is especially also the issue with supply chain, with ensuring availability, raw material, pack material price increases, right, all these have an impact on the pricing strategies, and it's, uh, I think, as uh, the leading global information services company, as Nielsen IQ, we are helping our uh, clients, our retailers, our customers, right, to really uh, define the uh, optimum, right, uh, pricing and promotion strategy, right, uh, taking also consumer to the uh, center, right. I think this is the top, uh, I think, revenue management, revenue optimization, right, uh, is so important and hot topic across the industry, right. Not only yeah. the sustainability angle, but across, right. Yeah, and it kind of um, it links to the a question that came in around. Uh, thanks for the, the wonderful presentation. I wonder are these trends specifically relevant for Turkey, or can you see them in other parts of the world? Because obviously we've a, a global audience working on um, collaboration for healthier lives, and I absolutely think that unpicking that trend around the breaking the price barrier is something that is is relevant in in absolutely. Um, uh, all markets and there's a huge amount of work I think that can be done collaboratively um, to to work on that. I, I'd love to, um, or is there something that you've seen from maybe your work in other parts of the world as well? I'm thinking in particular the Nielsen IQ team or, or Think Neuro um, that stood out from you or you see that could be a, you know, beyond the, 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 the borders? Yes, sure, so, I see more. Sorry, please. please Yes. No, I just wanted to mention that actually I, I see especially the transformation from diagnostic descriptive analytics uh, towards more prescript, predictive and prescriptive analytics, right, uh, to really define uh, what if scenarios as well as uh, what do I need to do to achieve this, right, in terms of pricing, in terms of distribution. So this is the, I think, important part, but Edan, uh, I think uh, you would like to answer also from your angle, right? Yeah, for, from my angle, of course, there, there are some uh, trends that are specific to Turkey and I have to do the uh, research in other countries to understand, the, to, to compare difference. But some of the, especially neurofindings, since they delve the deep dive into the human decision making and human nature, some of the findings are uh, global findings, global learnings, I would say, for example, being here and now or uh, people being self-centered or uh, being cool, better performing than helping the uh, goodness of the world are the trends that can be seen in the other parts of the world as well. That's why I have given the Tesla example as a global example uh, of how being uh, cool beeps, being innovative or being uh, you know, honest and uh, responsible. So some of them are, I could say, uh, globally, uh, valid and some of them are specific to Turkey. But in order, in order to be able to directly compare, we have to do the uh, research elsewhere, of course. 
And Ada, can I just ask you a follow up question on um, uh, this, um, I suppose, what you've seen now between the, the kind of the here and now communication, that future thinking. Do you have any more examples of, um, yes, of the here and now communication, something that people can take away today and um, already put it into, into action? Of course, of course, I can share my, uh, some examples. Uh, as I said, these are part of our uh, evolutionary psychology and our survival in instinct motivates us to focus more on the dynamics uh, that threaten us or gives us pleasures. So these threats or pleasures are priority if they pl take place right now, not in the unforeseeable future and in the immediate environment. So in addition to that, that as it was stated, the abstract concept or explanations withdraws the audience and leave, leaves them with a bitter taste of confusion. Communication language should be uh, shaped by these two dynamics. And my examples would be uh, people, for example, uh, mention in addition to penguins on polar bears, South Pole uh, repeatedly when asked about the words that come to their mind uh, related with climate change. However, when climate change messages refer to South Pole, which is out of sight for 99.9% .9 of the world's population, or when they refer to the waste yards, which are nowhere to be found when you're living in the city, uh, people have difficulty in understanding the impact of climate change or since they cannot resonate with the place. So therefore, it is, uh, my suggestion would be to use the places that the audience have connection to, such as the flood in their cities, the animals dying on the streets, trees fading in their hiking trails, or I mean, instead of showing the corals bleaching, indicating the air pollution levels for the target audience's city would be more effective. Or showing the, instead of showing the water population, uh, showing its effect on drinking water and human, human health, would be more effective. Brilliant, thank you. Another question that's come in, um, um, uh, the person will be interested to know, did you see any differences in trends between urban and rural um, areas in, in Turkey? I mean, in our research, we only covered the urban areas uh, and the um, high level of socioeconomic classes, middle and high level, excluding the DNA social classes. So I think, I mean, since sustainability is a very, um, I mean, distant and uh, unfamiliar concept to urban population, it would not uh, reflect a uh, hundred uh, percent communication and understanding on the rural part of the country. So I believe uh, some trends uh, would not be applicable for those uh, groups, let me say. I agree with Noor, our target group was the same. Uh, and I agree, I agree with Noor's comments. Thank you. Um, so we just have a, a two or three minutes left, um, and I think we have covered all of the questions in um, uh, in the chat box. So yeah, and when we have a, a minute to give um, uh, a final message to, um, to the audience that are um, listening, so you see here four, 14 clear um, trends, action that's happening um, on the ground. So maybe we'll just do a, a quick um, a final word from all of the speakers before we um, let everyone back to their day jobs and putting these insights into, um, into action. Um, Didim, I'll start with you. Yes, as we all know, sustainability topic is such an important uh, topic for shaping our future, right? And all these insights, foresights, I think it to be considered in each of the countries. And as I mentioned, it can be also rechecked with the local trends, local insights and reshaped, right? But there are great insights which can be formed as actions, directly as actions, indicated actions for retailers, for manufacturers, uh, to win in the marketplace and to shape the future with sustainability, right? So I think I'm really very happy to be part of this great Migros project and I'm very happy uh, to present this at the Consumer Goods Forum. So great uh, opportunity to meet you all and uh, such a valuable uh, project. So thank you very much, right, to all of you. And looking forward that with all these insights and foresights, we contribute to the industry, right? I think while shaping our product concepts, while shaping our in-store activations as retailers, right? So it's all about winning together with consumers, with retailers, with manufacturers, right? All together, right? And consumer is at the heart of our uh, of the center, right? Thank you. Brilliant, thank you. Nur, uh, final words. 
Yes, thank you, Sharon. So, I mean, already Sartan Bey shared the actions they have taken uh, while considering the results of these trends and the two important projects. So it's really important uh, how we communicate uh, the products uh, when we present to the shoppers. It's really important to position the price points in terms of sustainable products. It's really important to catch the and to connect to the emotional bonding of the shoppers uh, when we uh, launch the products. It's really important how we communicate the ingredients, how we position the packaging, etc. So these all 14 trends really make the contribution to increase the awareness and understanding about the sustainability concept and create by creating this familiarity and increasing the knowledge uh, among the uh, shoppers and consumers uh, we are uh, really preparing a better future a better uh, world to the next generation so i'm really happy to part of uh, this panel and uh, i really thank uh, for all the audiences for their uh, great questions and uh, participation thank you great ada let's uh, let's go to you and it's true that there's not one silver bullet that can um uh, we have we don't have one solution and uh, we are looking at um how we can use all of these um trends ada your final message to the to the audience before we close up with uh, certain I totally agree with you, Sharon. There cannot be one holy, holy grail to solve the problem. But the whole, if there was a holy grail, that would be the emotion because I would say the phonetical simil similarity between the word motion and emotion is not a coincidence. You cannot uh, make people take action without creating emotion. So the sustainability is a concept that cannot be explained or uh, that cannot uh, push people towards action by giving sustainability claims, sustainability messages only. We have to embed a huge amount of uh, emotion to the concept, to the products, so that we can make people take action. And I'd like to thank all the team, uh, all the parties, uh, Migros, Nielsen IQ, and uh, to Consumer Goods Forum for uh, taking uh, part in this panel and this project. It was a great pleasure for me too. Thank you. Wonderful. I think that's a great, um, uh, I remember that phrase, emotion and emotion, and that, that connection that's needed to, to link to action. Sertan, we let you close up uh, the webinar with the final words to the audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, before uh, this webinar, I want to recheck uh, the uh, price barrier uh, con uh, of uh, the sustainable products. And uh, we made a mini survey. In the mini survey we conducted uh, in July to 2022, we received the opinions of 200 Migros customers, uh, six out of 10 states that the price is the most important issue when choosing among sustainable products. Uh, so it is important for sustainable product manufacturers uh, to balance the price gap of the sustainable products and make them more reachable for the consumers uh, in this special period. And for the retailers, uh, please uh, find your motto, uh, like us, focus on your geography, focus, focus on your today's actions and be simple uh, in your communication. Uh, these are the final words for me. Brilliant. Thank you so much, all of you, for sharing all of those insights uh, today. I hope you all enjoyed um, that session. The recording is available um, on our website. A huge thank you. And we will see you in September for the sixth session in the Healthier and More Sustainable Diet Learning Series. Thank you, Sertan, Ada, Noor, and Didum. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.